Today, you can find three-foot-tall egrets and four-foot-tall herons, wandering in the wetlands, in discreet search of fish, insects, or crustaceans. However, a more spectacular and terrifying predator prowled the wetlands 70 million years ago, along the Rio Grande River in Texas, the giraffe-sized pterosaur known as Quetzalcoatlus. It was the biggest flying animal ever to live on Earth, with a wingspan of between 37 and 40 feet. Although size varies across different species, the Quetzalcoatlus genus includes some of the largest flying creatures ever found. Quetzalcoatlus was a pterosaur, a type of flying reptile. Despite living during the same time period, it was not a dinosaur, though they were close relatives. During the late Cretaceous, Quetzalcoatlus inhabited North America. In 1975, the first fossilized remains of Quetzalcoatlus were found. Most of the largest known flying animals ever to exist are the pterosaurs. Quetzalcoatlus was the biggest and most well-known of these flying titans. It's the most well-known member of the Asdarkid family of pterosaurs, which lived only during the Cretaceous period, between 144 and 66 million years ago, and was named after a Mesoamerican deity. To put it another way, the Asdarkid family lived throughout the whole Cretaceous, or about 80 million years. However, paleontologists have found fossils dating back to the early Cretaceous, which means they might have evolved earlier. They evolved from basal pterosaurs. The earlier pterosaurs were smaller in size and had fully toothed jaws. They also had long tails. All Asdarkid pterosaurs had very long, pointed skulls, and some of them also had small crests on the backs of their heads. They possessed long legs, small torsos, long necks, and little wings compared to the length of their bodies. For a period, Quetzalcoatlus and its relatives were thought to be enormous vultures that picked carcasses to feed on. This conclusion was drawn from the observation that Quetzalcoatlus fossils were discovered in land, in contrast to other huge pterosaurs like the crested pteranodon. They were also believed to have been fish skimmers who patrolled freshwater systems in search of prey. The theory was abandoned because it was determined that neither as darkids nor any other flying reptiles were suitable for skimming. Any fishing pterosaurs would have to dive for their prey or pluck fish out of the water's surface, but they lacked the jaws and neck anatomy for such a lifestyle. Another hypothesis for the diet of this animal was that it was primarily a scavenger, their diet would be likened to that of the marabou stork, which could hunt smaller animals in addition to scavenging dead animals. The scavenger argument was rejected because of the absence of morphological traits present in typical scavenger species, such as a hooked beak. According to a more recent theory, this reptile may have been a hunter, who stalked and attacked its prey in order to catch it. Quetzalcoatlus likely preyed on smaller vertebrates, much like contemporary storks do now. Estimations of its wingspan are varied, but by some of the highest estimates, this animal could possess a wingspan of 65 feet or 20 meters, while weight estimates were absurdly low. Although a maximum weight of 250 kilograms has lately been accepted for these giants, they could weigh as little as 100 or even 70 kilograms. With a height of almost 5 meters or 16 feet, the animal would have been as tall as a giraffe while standing upright with its beak providing a bird's-eye perspective of the surrounding area. This made it the tallest predator on its continent, towering over Tyrannosaurus rex, in spite of the fact that Tyrannosaurus rex was much heavier. During the late Cretaceous period, Quetzalcoatlus inhabited in North and Central America, 144 to 67 million years ago. If Quetzalcoatlus consumed fish, they must have resided close to some kind of sizable water supply. The Big Bend National Park in Texas's southernmost region, for example, is where the majority of the remains of Quetzalcoatlus fossils have been discovered. The dinosaur Alamosaurus is the dominant species in the bed where this specimen was discovered. Since the habitat of this dinosaur species is known, one can make assumptions about the environment of the Quetzalcoatlus as well. It was discovered in what experts believe to be semi-arid inland plains. Quetzalcoatlus rose first in North America, and its range gradually spread. Experts think growing aridity during the Cretaceous may have favored the Quetzalcoatlus's spread to other parts of the continent. 
Not a lot of predators would have been big enough to take down an adult Quetzalcoatlus. However, juveniles would have been prey to bigger predators, including members of their own genus. The Quetzalcoatlus and many other animals, including all the dinosaurs, perished during the end of the Cretaceous period. Some researchers hypothesize that the Quetzalcoatlus's ability to fly helped it survive the primary extinction event. But due to a shortage of food, it did not, however, continue to live for very long after this. Thanks very much for watching this video and be sure to subscribe.